well so in the first video we have seen that how this seven layer model is going getting to be evolved so we have seen the two layer model or one layer model now from the one layer model to two layer models we have come to four layer models now this particular four layer models that we have already seen in the first video that it has got uh, four layers the topmost layer is application layer and the technical layers they are divided into network layer data link layer and physical layers now we'll see how this is categorizing the functions the steps of data communication so for instance the lowermost layer that is the physical layer you can see here the physical layer is now consisting of the physical media the physical media is nothing but the actual card the microcontroller based card which is designed so that the process of actual data transmission or reception takes place and this is particularly connected to the media this media can be a cable or it can be a fiber optics or whatever or it can be even wireless so basically the physical layer it describes the physical aspects of the networks how the computers in between they are connected to each other so this specifies the interconnect topologies so we have seen in the first chapter the meaning of topology the physical arrangement of the network the physical and logical arrangement of the network leads to topologies how the devices are connected so this physical layer it specifies the interconnection it specifies the topologies how the machines how the nodes they are connected physically and logically and that's why the devices are specified at this particular layer the devices for actual transmission and reception they come at this particular layer the next layer is the network layer it defines a standard method for operating between the nodes we have seen the meaning of node node is nothing but the computing devices they are in the network so this networking layer it defines a standard method it's a standardization for operating between the nodes now it's a, such a huge network and in this huge network we need to identify each and every node and therefore we must have a addressing scheme we have seen that the net, this particular network is analogous something like a city and in the city when when the postman uh, they want to distribute some letters or some communication uh, between two persons they need to have addressing schemes and therefore we write address on the envelope in the same manner here also this is such a huge network so addressing scheme is re is required otherwise it becomes not it is not clear from which machine the data is to be transmitted to which other machine so this addressing scheme is defined by means of ip ip stands for internet protocol so every machine will have ip address so this accounts for varying topologies so now you will come to know you will understand that though there are different topologies the topologies could be ring topology bus topology or star topology on one side in the same way there could be different topology on the receiving side but though the topologies are different the standards are same so therefore there is no difficulty in passing on the data from one topology to other topology and that is the essence behind defining this osi model because this particular standardization helps the entire networking industry to maintain the compatibility and to maintain the standards and therefore the entire network communication happens without any difficulty so that's the that's the reason that this particular layering has been done now the next layer is data link layer so this data link layer it works with the network layer we have seen that no single layer works in isolation they have to work with a layer just above above it or just below it okay because it's a inter process operations so unless the layer a particular layer works with the layer above and the layer below the entire communication won't be successful so therefore this data link layer it works with the network layer to translate logical addresses now this is a basic concept that logical address and the uh, addresses which are described by means of numericals for example the address could be 127.0.1.2 something like this or 127.16.13.4 so this is a address which is defined by means of numbers now you will agree with me that remembering the numbers is very difficult and therefore you can have and typing the numbers basically whenever you want to communicate with different machines then 
you can't manually go on typing the numbers. So better is to have some names. So therefore, for, for instance, the Shivaji University network is or the Shivaji University logical address, server logical address is unishivaji.ac.in. But behind this unishivaji.ac.in, there is a numerical address, okay. So which you need not know for the communication. You can just type the unishivaji.ac.in and the mechanism which is behind this, it will do all the translation and it will do, it will take care of the entire process. So therefore, this particular logical addresses, they are taking, taken care by the data link layer. And this logical addresses, they are again mapped to hardware addresses. Those are called as MAC addresses. So MAC addresses, they are for the transmission. So every machine has got MAC addresses and these MAC addresses, they cannot be changed. So in this way, the entire translation of logical address into hardware addresses is taken care by the data link layer. And this defines a single link, link protocol for transfer between the two nodes. So whenever, as, as you can see, the name itself is data link. So the operation is, the purpose is linking the two layers for data transmission and reception. So in this way, the entire protocol for translating the logical address into hardware addresses and the protocol is intended for transfer between the two nodes in a network. So that's the function of these three layers. So in this four layer model, the physical layer will take care of the physical aspects of networking like cards and wires and it specifies the interconnection topologies and devices. The network layer will take care of the standardization for identification of the nodes in the network. So I, by means of IP address, the data link will take care of translation of logical address into hardware addresses because every machine has got hardware address that is called as a MAC address. And this MAC address is mapped to logical address by means of protocols and those protocols will be will be the intended part of data link layer. Now, again, as the network, it got uh, complicated and uh, why, it, why it got scaled up and so many varieties came into the picture. So, this four layer model was again not uh, that sufficient to categorize the steps and to categorize the processes and to categorize the protocols. So therefore, uh, a five layer model did came into the picture so that the quality of service can be increased. What do you mean by quality of service? The quality of service is, service is the, not only the ease, but the accuracy and uh, the precision with which the data transmission takes place. So if you want to have the quality of service or very successful, like 99 point successful transmission and reception of data without any errors, then you need to again define the steps and the processes and you need to categorize them in a much, much better way. And therefore, this seven layer model is the need of the hour. But before the seven layer model, the five layer model was tested. And this five layer model, it consists of the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, transport layer and application layer. So, this particular model, it was assumed that it will give very good quality of service because there is a variable levels of data integrity in the network. So, data integrity at varying level, that is the basic aspect of the network. So, additional data exchanges, they are done to ensure connectivity or worse conditions because whenever you just assume the conditions over which the channel works, the channel can have best condition at some time or it can have the condition get worsen on some other time because you know that uh, even if you take the channel as a free space, they need free space also. There are so many layers like ionospheric layers, tropospheric layers and so on. And even with the, with the season, with the uh, like the winter or summer, the things are different. Uh, just an example how the things go on uh, varying in the channel. So therefore, when you consider the network and the data transmission, you need to consider all these aspects which are not static which are much, much dynamic and therefore, again one more layer was introduced in this four layer model and that layer is transport layer and with this introduction of this, it was uh, found that the quality of service is much better and again one more layer was in introduced for the controlling the sessions because 
in the any networking everything is a means of session so what is the session in the entire complicated network one particular node can interact with one other node and at the same time one other node can interact with some other node so in this way in a simultaneous operation there will be so many nodes they will be interacting with so many other nodes so you need to have sessions and these sessions they will be uh, taken taking care of the transmission and synchronization part so this synchronization is very important unless the synchronization works this the transfer cannot be like uh, it cannot be successful therefore this synchronization uh, there are some checkpoints that you need to follow for the communication between two nodes and when the data arrives at a particular nodes when it starts from a particular node and when it arrives at the destination node the session it, it is having one session and that session has, will be having certain checkpoints and the checkpoints will make sure that the data transmission is done without any errors so therefore very soon in the process of dividing the steps of communication the entire it was found that the seven layers model is sufficient to clearly categorize the steps of transmission and reception the steps of data communication and then as you can see on the screen the best model that was thought of in 1986-84 and that model was the seven layer model and these seven layers they are having physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer and application layer. So in this way this seven layer model with addition of the presentation model, presentation layer uh, it was thought of taking care, care of management and security because you know that the security is also a very important aspect of computer networking and then um, this model it is some sort of standardized notation for the entire networking communication and the application level in fact it is the layer which takes care of the standardization much better way because today you know that there are so many browsers and though there are different browsers it never happens that uh, the google chrome and uh, the mozilla firefox so though they are different browsers but the compatibility is there because you can see the same thing that is because of the compatibility and that is care taken care by the layers like application layer so it gives set of encoding rules because basically this is an encoding because what you see on the screen and what happens in the background is totally different so therefore encoding is required so that the conversion part and the visible part it takes care in a proper manner and the intended functionality is taken care by the presentation layer so presentation layer works with the application layer so that the ease with which the user can see the things successfully is taken care so in this way uh, this is about uh, the seven layer model and uh, we have discussed how this seven layer model is evolved over the period of time